All right, turning our attention to crime after a woman was viciously attacked on her way to work at JFK Airport train station. The victim now fears she might lose an eye. The attacker was out on parole for other violent crimes. Our correspondent, Christina Thompson, has those details and more. Christina. Hey, Bob. Hey, Katrina. This story is just absolutely so disturbing. This woman's attacker, 41-year-old Wahid Foster, he's a convicted murderer. He has a long rap sheet of violence and arrests. He's homeless, living out on the streets in the community. Now, I do want to show you the video of what happened to 33-year-old Elizabeth Gomez as she arrived at the Howard Beach subway station in Queens. She was heading to her job at JFK Airport around 5.15 a.m. Just a warning, it is very violent. Now, Gomez told reporters that her attacker was muttering about the devil when they stepped off the train. She ignored him, and that's when the security footage captures him chasing after her, dragging her along the ground. He starts kicking her and punching her, and then he just calmly walks away. Luckily, he was arrested shortly yeah, after. Him. Right, it, yeah, some, uh, um, another man did try to come to her aid, but he's chased off. Now, this woman says that she fears she's going to lose her eye from this savage, savage beating. The type of beating that Foster was arrested for several times in the past at just 14 years old. He was arrested for murdering his 82-year-old grandmother in another brutal beating. Six years after that murder, he was arrested for stabbing his 21-year-old sister with a screwdriver. And then in 2010, he was arrested for attacking three workers at the Creedmoor Psychiatric Center, where he was an inpatient. Court records show that he was on parole until November 2024 at the time of this most recent attack. But it's it's just horrific details like that to hear that he's a repeat offender like this. A repeat violent offender. Right. Extreme. Uh, murdering his grandmother, attacking his sister with a screwdriver. My question is, is you know, I think of the collective one is, why is he even on the streets. Why is he not still in right. prison? He's a convicted murderer. Well, this is what I want to talk about yeah. is just recidivism here. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like a revolving door of never ending criminals coming in and the criminal justice system just spitting them back out. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the facts, I mean, this year, 25% of just burglars, someone who commits a burglary, within six months, 25%, they're back to committing wow. the same crime. Uh, if yeah. only there were a way to deal with that, Brian Anderson, yes. who worked in the Giuliani campaign <laughs> uh, uh, administration. And that's what he said. Mm -hmm. If somebody breaks a window, it's vandalism. Hmm. Funny how often they come back and do other things. If someone jumps a turnstile, if someone's caught doing the squeegee man, if somebody's you know graffitiing a building, these people were arrested and they were held. And very often it turned up that they had other arrests and the reason to detain them. But, you know, our present government doesn't see things that way. So people like this, these violent offenders, are out the very next day. So our government is not doing what it needs to do to protect us, and we need to hold them accountable. I went back and I looked at some of the numbers and crimes. When Giuliani took office uh, in 94, mm -hmm. they started going down. Yes. Right? 2,200 uh, murders a year in New York City that year. Yes. Seven so, a day. Yeah. So yeah. things wow. started going down as soon as mm -hmm. he took office. Uh, 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 in 94, and then mm -hmm. uh, 2001. But Bloomberg kept it up, and you yes. created a culture within the police department in which they knew how to do this. It almost didn't matter who the mayor was. Mm -hmm. uh, Bloomberg was in, and even de Blasio, the culture was there. They knew how to do this. But now, yeah. it's like people are leaving the, the uh, police department, and you have that easy on crime attitude. Now there's a real danger. Yeah, and there's no accountability from the government. They just go on as if, you know, except maybe if Governor Hochul sees something on TV, she'll say something and then hold that guy. But why should it come to that? Yeah, you know, and, and Christina, we're not just talking about New York City here. I mean, I think yeah. sometimes being in New York City uh, with, with here at Newsmax, you know, we, we, we focus on what's exactly around us. But this right. is happening across the country. Right. Um, we're showing is, some stats on that. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what we're, you know, Chicago, we're looking at right here. This is something that continues to go on. And, and you know, uh, Christina, from some of your research, I mean, have you, is there any why some of these people have been let out? I mean, it's it's just whatever happened, whatever changed in 2020, all of a sudden we're seeing more and more criminals just being let out on the streets. And not only that, but but they're um, just bravery, I guess, at being able to commit these crimes of just thinking that they can Raising commit this. these crimes. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Without any consequences. And I mean, you mentioned Chicago. You also Philadelphia. We look at these cities. St. Louis, Philadelphia, are just San Francisco, Orleans, uh, San Dem Francisco. Democratic mayors. Yeah. Through the roof. You're saying. You're right. seeing all that. Just saying. 
Even if you had Democratic mayors, if you had DAs that, that would actually make people stay Convict, behind bars. I think the, the because there has to be a, a, um, a trust also to mm. get good uh, police work. The police have to believe that when they go in and put yes. their lives on the line and stop these bad guys or catch them and then take them in, that these people are going to be kept behind bars. But now... You bring them in, and there's no guarantee they stay behind bars. I think bars. that's the problem, that police officers are leaving in droves because they're not feeling appreciated. They're terrified that if they do something wrong on the job, that they're going I to be fired or prosecuted. And uh, what we're seeing is an intense rise in crime because of the way that quite frankly, yeah. America has been treating their yeah. police officers. No, I think that's years. a great uh, that's a great point. Uh, Brian, I want to give you the last no. word talking. Uh, okay, we got to go. We have to go. I'm sorry. Yeah, no yeah. last word. No last word. Hold that I'll thought. I'll get you tomorrow. Uh, Brian Anderson <laughs> and Christina Thompson, thanks so much for joining More us. More words tomorrow.